key for exam two posted. Now, regarding our experiment demonstration last time. After our chat on Wednesday, I did some further work with our pH meter set up, which indicated that the electrode which we had used was not good. So I replaced the electrode and got values which were in good agreement with the analysis that we had done on the system. I'll talk more about that in a moment. But if you recall, this is the result of that analysis. <clears throat> so I decided to repeat the experiment in its entirety, only to discover that the pH meter went kaput. <laughs> so, I am not in position to repeat our analysis by experimental investigation. I have to order a new pH meter. I'm not surprised because that pH meter was the one that I was using when I joined the faculty here in 1987. Things do wear out. Someday I'll wear out but I expect not very soon. Now I come to discover that after our chalkboard crisis last time, when the counterweight fell on the floor, the result of which I immediately reported this to the repair folks, they came in here, managed to jam the counterweight back in there, and now have this board stuck not all the way up, <laughs> but here. I think I'll report this to Bernie Machen and see what he can do about this. <laughs> In any case, we'll get this repaired as soon as possible. I will do what I can to get the fix folks in here on the weekend and take care of this because they don't work late evenings and sometimes they will work weekends but to my knowledge there are no available time slots during the week that is to say times when this room is not used for class gathering that they could come in here and do this repair but over the years that counterweight's fallen out at least 25 times so as I said last time I'd like to think that the university would buy new boards. That hasn't happened yet. Will it happen? I don't know, but I will lobby for such. I'll write my congressman or congresswoman, my congressperson, how's that? And see what can be achieved. In any case, we are still in position to analyze the system in detail by methods which we have laboriously developed through chapter 18. So let's take a look and see what we got in comparison to our analysis last time, which was based on the possibility of the calcium ion molarity, the bicarb molarity, and the ammonia molarity all being about the same for this system, which resulted in a solubility for calcium carbonate of 4.2 times 10 to minus 3 in 1.0 molar ammonium chloride solution, and a corresponding hydronium ion concentration of 1.3 times 10 to minus 7, which, if you recall, we calculated from Ka ammonium ion last time. So as I said, we're still in position to analyze the system in detail because we've established the methods which will allow us to do such. So let's use those methods. Now again, 
any analysis of this nature is nothing which I would ever hold you responsible for on a quiz or exam. But I'd feel perfectly at liberty to give you this kind of stuff on bonus quiz, because you've got all the time in the world to do that. What counts is to understand it. And even though it may look overwhelming at first glance, the arithmetic and algebra associated with this problem is very simple. There's nothing fancy about this at all. Here's material balance for all forms of ammonium ion, given that we use 1.0 molar ammonium chloride solution. We know that the solubility of calcium carbonate in this system is the calcium ion molarity. Because when calcium ion goes in the solution, it behaves as like a spectator ion. It doesn't engage in any further chemistry. And we also know that as carbonate goes in the solution, it will either remain as carbonate or convert by material balance to bicarb, which in turn can convert by material balance to H2CO3, quote unquote. Keeping in mind that material balance depends on H plus exchange. Fundamental bronsted lauric acid based chemistry. Nothing difficult, but something you have to remember. Now, we can get at the detailed analysis with charge balance. Here it is. And we simplify immediately by recognizing that the chloride ion molarity is 1.0. Remember this 1.0 molar ammonium chloride solution? And we know that chloride ion is a base weaker than water. So chloride ion going in water solution is also a spectator ion. Doesn't do anything. Nothing fancy about this. Now, the two properties of this system in which we are interested is S, which is the calcium ion molarity, as well as the hydronium ion concentration. That's what we pursued last time. That's what we're going to pursue with this analysis. So I'm going to take the charge balance expression and write it like this. Where's all this stuff come from? Hmm? You see this? You see this? So two calcium ion can be replaced by two times this plus two times this plus two times this. I wrote that in there. All right. And now, one mole per liter bicarb ion disappears from the right leaving behind, well, not one mole per liter, we don't know what the value is, but the molar concentration of bicarb ion, times one. Twice the molar concentration of carbonate ion disappears from both sides of the expression. Now I'm going to operate on this further to get at the hydronium ion concentration in simpler form. We know that hydroxide ion is this, so hydroxide ion is nothing new. Where did I get this? You see this? Is it material balance for all forms of ammonium ion? The sum of the ammonium ion and ammonium molarities, which is 1.0? Nothing fancy about this. But I know when folks in your position look at something like this for the first time, the natural reaction is to go, ah! This is first year high school algebra. It's no more challenging than that. I'm not doing any solving. You do that. I told you. We're going for the hydronium ion concentration and the calcium ion concentration. We're trying to see if what we did earlier is correct by this detailed analysis. Because what we did earlier was based on believing that the calcium ion molarity, bicarb molarity, and ammonium molarity are the same. Now we're doing an analysis which will pinpoint the molarity of every species in the system. In this analysis that we're now doing, we're not making any assumptions. 
Recall last time in getting at that. We believe that the only contributor to the ammonia molarity was establishing that equilibrium reaction. We recognize that might not be quite on the nose because ammonia mine also can react with water to make ammonia. Right? And we believed, correctly so, that there's no carbonate ion molarity in the system of consequence because we know the pH of this system is less than 8. And that pH 8 carbonate ion is nothing. Bicarb out numbers carbonate 210 to 1 at pH 8. And this has got a pH lower than 8. But what about the possibility by the gang up factor, which we talked about last time? of ammonium ion reacting, because it's present in such a high molarity relative to bicarb ion, so ammonium ion reacting with bicarb ion to make a measurable molarity of quote-unquote H2CO3. Well, in writing that, we believe that that didn't occur. Well, we're going to find out about this stuff now. Okay? So I now have this expression for hydronium ion. And from Ka ammonium ion, I've got this for ammonia, and from Ka H2CO3, I got this. So I can take all this stuff and put it in here. I can put this in for this, and for this, I can put in this. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get an expression which gets rid of as many unknowns as possible. So I say, by appropriate substitutions, you do it. You need to practice. We've got what you need on the board. You'll wind up with this. I put calcium ion back in here. Why did I put calcium ion back in here? Aren't we trying to get the solubility of calcium carbonate in the system? So we want the calcium ion concentration. And we want it, we want also to get at pH. So why, by appropriate substitutions into what we've already considered, get a relationship between calcium ion and hydronium ion. Because those are the only two unknown components of this expression. What am I going to do now? What I'm going to do now is to realize, if at this point I speculate on a hydronium ion concentration, I can calculate a corresponding calcium ion concentration. And with those values I can calculate, as necessary, ammonium molarity, ammonium ion molarity, bicarb molarity, anything else I need. We've got the relationships on the board which allow us to do such. And if by speculating, by speculating on a hydronium ion concentration, using this to get a calcium ion concentration, what test will I apply to find out when I have got the right hydronium ion concentration, which of course in turn gives me the right calcium ion concentration? I've written it here. We go back to this. Because this part of the puzzle we know is true. So I'm going to put those values in for calcium ion, bicarb ion, ammonia concentration, and if I get 7.2 times 10 to minus 8, or something that's really close to 7.2 times 10 to minus 8, problem solved. So yeah, I'm going to have to spend some time doing some arithmetic. So the first consideration at this point would be, what kind of hydronium ion concentration value do you want to speculate on? Let's take advantage of what we already know. We know the system has got a pH less than 8.0. But since the system has been prepared by saturating calcium carbonate into ammonium chloride solution, and since ammonium mine is a pretty doggone weak acid, and since the addition of calcium carbonate to the ammonium chloride solution is guaranteed to raise pH, I gotta have a pH that's less than 8. 
but a pH that's higher than the pH for 1.0 molar ammonium chloride solution, which we did last time, 4.63. But we know that ammonium ion carbonate ion is a large extent reaction. So on that basis, I'm going to bet that the pH is going to be closer to 8 than it is going to be closer to 4.6. You don't have to believe that if you don't want to. You can pick any pH in between 8 and 4.63. Determine the corresponding hydronium ion concentration. Calculate a value for calcium ion. Take the values you then get for ammonia and ammonium, ammonia molarity and bicarb molarity. Put them in there and see if you get 7.2 times 10 to minus 8. Well, the first value I tried for hydronium ion is 1.0 times 10 to minus 7. Why did I try this? I just talked about why I tried this. That gives me a calcium ion molarity of 3.4 times 10 to minus 3, an ammonia molarity of 5.6 times 10 to minus 3, and a bicarb molarity of 2.74 times 10 to minus 3. I'll round this to two sig figs when I get to the end of the pipeline. When I'm playing these games, and I know I'm allowed two sig figs at the end, and to three sig figs, I get something like in the second decimal place, the so-called hundreds place, I get three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll keep those in there. I'll shrink that to two sig figs if I got one or two or nine or I, I eight in the second decimal place. I'm just telling you how I treat the numbers. Because you've got to let the numbers talk to you. Okay. Now, before we look at the value we get, for this expression, based on a hydronium ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to minus 7, which gives us these corresponding calcium ion, ammonia, and bicarb molarities. Notice that the analysis, as we have so far proceeded with it, shows the ammonia molarity to be greater than the calcium ion molarity. Does that seem reasonable? Before we did any of this arithmetic, we didn't talk about... Damn knobs back here. <laughs> I don't know how many pairs of pants I've ruined on this stuff. Because these things are exactly, well, not exactly, but just about the same as belt loops. <laughs> All right, that's still on, okay. When you talk about this last time, we'll talk about it now. On what basis can we conclude that the calcium ion, I mean, that the ammonia molarity is greater than the calcium ion molarity in this system? Because based on this reaction and this reaction alone, we expect the calcium ion molarity and ammonia molarity to be the same. That's what we based this solubility value on. But why is it that it's more reasonable, more reasonable for this system to think that the ammonia molarity is in fact larger than the calcium ion molarity, at least somewhat? And in turn, is there an argument which we could make to believe that the calcium ion molarity might be a little bit bigger than the ammonia molarity? This is the fun of the game. This is the chemistry. All right, first question. On what basis could we conclude that the ammonium molarity is at least somewhat bigger than the calcium ion molarity? Well, we said uh, ammonium ion would react with water to create more ammonia. Mm -hmm. We got this. Which really corresponds to Ka ammonium ion, okay? Is there another reaction which could contribute to the calcium ion molarity? Beside this one. This certainly is the reaction which in the main contributes to the calcium ion molarity. Uh, is the reaction of calcium carbonate with water? Sure. <laughs> Water's in there. So I'll write this down. Versus calcium carbonate plus water. 
Now we've done this before. Do you remember that in doing this, we get a K of 1.3 times 10 to the minus 12? What's K A money mine? 5.6 times 10 to minus 10. Both of these numbers are very small, but K A money mine is bigger than this, isn't it? That means we expect this reaction to go larger extent than this reaction. That means I have every reason to conclude, based on this comparison of these K values, that the ammonium molarity ought to be a little bit bigger than the calcium ion molarity. Not substantially, because these K numbers are small. But K, A ammonium ion is bigger than this. That means this reaction will produce ammonia more effectively than this reaction will contribute to the calcium ion molarity. We're just talking about the chemistry of the system. Now then, is it imaginable that the calcium ion molarity might even be a little bit larger than the ammonium molarity? Or larger, is it imaginable? There's anything we've talked about which might lead to that possibility. You've got to put the puzzle parts together. Wait a minute. I'm asking regarding factors that we have considered that affect solubility. Could the salt affect? Yeah, how about the salt effect? Isn't this a solution? I mean, I didn't, don't have it up there. 1.0 molar ammonium chloride solution. Isn't that a solution which has certainly got a high concentration of positive and negative ions? Sure. They could affect the solubility of calcium carbonate. To what extent, we don't know, at least not yet, but it's something to think about. But what we do know is this analysis pays attention to every consideration except salt effect. I do not know how to factor the salt effect into this stuff. I've not yet seen such an analysis. Had I seen such, and if ever I should become aware of such, I will put it in here. I don't leave anything out. I want you to be able to look at chemistry. And that's what this is about. Chemistry is marvelous, but it's damn difficult and detailed. In any case, back to this. With this information, I put it back into what I've labeled star with a circle around or asterisk. So I don't have to rewrite this. I get 5.3 times 10 to minus 8, which is pretty close to 7.2 times 10 to minus 8. Now, if you look at this expression, in conjunction with these values, which follow from a hydronium ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to minus 7, you can decide if, in fact, the correct hydronium ion concentration is a little bit smaller or a little bit greater than this value. I'll let you think about that. But even if you don't see which direction to travel, in other words, we got a value that's close, so we have every reason to believe that whatever the true hydronium ion concentration is for the system, it's close to this. It'll be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. So if you don't see which way to travel, try a value that's a little bit bigger, try a value that's a little bit smaller, and see which will give you a corresponding calcium ion molarity and ammonia molarity and bicarb molarity, which gets you closer to 7.2 10, times 10 to minus 8 than this number. You do it. Here's what I find. Actual Hydronium ion concentration is one point two times ten to minus seven. Remember what we got from this? I think I wrote it over there. That's one point three times ten to minus seven. So this analysis, G was analysis, wasn't bad. Pretty dang on close. pH 6.89, this is pH 6.92. Now, 
without considering the salt effect, because I do not know how to factor that into this analysis. So without considering the salt effect, if I take this to be the correct hydronium ion concentration for the system, and that correspondingly the correct pH, let's take a look at what values we get for calcium ion, ammonia, bicarbine, and stuff like that. What is that? I didn't write any arithmetic. It's up to you to do. <laughs> You're not going to benefit from this by just copying it down. I understand, but your understanding will come from doing the work. You do the work, and if you're perplexed by this, this after you do the work, then you come and see us, and we'll assist you, okay? So taking this to be the true system hydronium ion concentration, and that the system pH, I get Calcium ion, 4.37 times 10 to minus 3, call it 4.4 times 10 to minus 3, somewhat bigger than this. And ammonia, 4.6 times 10 to minus 3, and bicarb, 3.4 times 10 to minus 3. So notice how the calcium ion concentration and ammonia concentra concentrations have gotten closer than what we had on the board before at the 1.0 times 10 to minus 7 value. But these results still keep with what we said. We expected that the calcium ion concentration, uh, pardon me, that the ammonia concentration would be a little bit bigger than the ammonia concentration. I mean, the ammonia concentration would be a little bit bigger than the calcium ion concentration. That's what we got. It follows with what we had previously considered. Fine. This, by the way, gives you Six point nine times ten to minus eight. I couldn't get a hydronium ion concentration other than one point two times to minus seven, and a corresponding calcium ion molarity of four point three times four point three seven times ten to minus three to get me any closer to seven point two times ten to minus eight. So I'll take this as a satisfactory solution to the problem. And what am I going to do? to pursue this matter further and provide myself with greater faith in this analysis. I'm going to wait till the new pH meter gets here and repeat the investigation. Because as I said, there's only one bottom line dictator in science and that's the experimentally verifiable fact. Why did I do what? Well, it is actual based on this analysis. Okay? So if you prefer, I'll take out actual and I'll say, your comment is fair, based on this analysis. That's what we get. Your comment is fair. Okay? Now, let's go further with these considerations which are in regard to chemical impacts on solubility of salts of limited solubility in water. A 
simple equilibrium. An equilibrium established by saturating deionized water with calcium hydroxide. Now relative to calcium carbonate and calcium sulfate, given that you've done this in lab and given that we've already talked about this, we know calcium hydroxide is a good deal more soluble than gypsum or chalk. Gypsum, calcium sulfate dihydrate. Chalk, calcium carbonate, teacher's favorite weapon. Now, the one significant figure, the pH of calcium hydroxide saturated in water at normal laboratory conditions is 12.6 to 1 sig fig. So from this, if you want, you can calculate solubility as well as the hydroxide ion concentration and get system, I mean, we've already got system pH. Didn't want to say that. Now what are we going to do with this system? We're going to apply some changes. And after we apply these changes, these various changes, we're going to ask ourselves, what happens to this system on, apply, on applying these changes? We'll ask, as a consequence of what happens to the system, what's the result of the impact on this equilibrium? Does it provoke a reaction on this equilibrium left to right, right to left, or not at all? Or in fact, because of the change we apply, do we institute in the system another equilibrium of consequence? Maybe an equilibrium which, because of its importance, supersedes the importance of this equilibrium. All this stuff we're going to think about. All right. So to sum up what occurs to the system and its components, after we apply the change, we'll ask what impact that exerts on the amount of calcium hydroxide in the system, the calcium ion molarity, and the hydroxide ion molarity. Change one. These are all additive changes. Adding something to a system is a hell of a lot easier than subtracting something from a system. I guarantee, even though you may have the best tweezers in the universe, to try to reach into this system if it stands before you in a beaker or a test tube and catch a hold of a calcium ion and pull it out of there, that's not easy to do. Add one molar sodium hydroxide. Remember we are imagining this equilibrium stands before us in a large beaker with a large volume of this equilibrium system. Large so that it is easily viewable. But what I'm asking you to do is to view this system in your mind's eye. That's the important eye anyway, or the most important eye. All right. Well, if we add sodium hydroxide solution, you think it's fair to say hydroxide ion molarity is going up? How about that? One molar hydroxide ion in this system, and that's a hell of a lot higher than hydroxide ion concentration, which corresponds to a pH of 12.6. You can figure out the hydroxide ion concentration for this. Well then. As soon as I boost the hydroxide ion concentration, what have I done to this equilibrium? I killed it. What's going to happen to reestablish equilibrium? Left to right, right to left. Right to left. Okay. So we'll write this to indicate reaction. Oops. For this treatment, we'll write this. That means this concentration's got to go down, and the amount of this stuff is going up. Reaction equation, calcium ion plus two hydroxide ion makes this which is indicated by this. All right. Two. 
add one molar calcium chloride solution. This treatment immediately parallels this treatment, except that this time we added the other component of the system. Calcium ion molarity goes up, hydroxide ion molarity goes down, reaction goes right to left, and the amount of calcium hydroxide goes up. All right. Now, add one molar HCl. And underneath this, I'm going to make a note. Or consideration in parentheses. Amount question mark. Does the amount of the added one molar HCl make a difference? In what fashion does this make a difference? Well, we know the hydronium ion supplied by adding the hydrochloric acid solution readily clobbers calcium hydroxide. Because hydronium ion beats the living hell out of hydroxide ion. Now then, if I just add a drop or two, given that we're imagining that we got a large volume of this system, maybe a hundred grams of undissolved calcium hydroxide and a one or two liter volume of solution containing calcium ion and hydroxide ion. Because once I got the equilibrium established, I can put in 80 tons of calcium hydroxide if I want. That won't affect the equilibrium at all. Won't change the molarities of calcium ion and hydroxide ion. It will change the amount of this I have. There's no question about that. But the addition of calcium hydroxide after this equilibrium is established has no impact at all on the equilibrium itself. So if I had a drop of this, what's going to happen to hydroxide ion molarity? I hope you recognize this is going to come down. And the calcium ion molarity? What? Increase. Increase. Amount of calcium hydroxide? Decrease. Reaction occurring to reestablish equilibrium? Left to right? Now then, be careful about this. I added this. Okay. After having added this and the equilibrium is reestablished, what now will be the calcium ion concentration? Because this arrow indicates that at the instant at which I added the HCl solution, I killed this equilibrium and dissolved more of this, which made a higher concentration of calcium ion. After equilibrium is reestablished, what happens to the hydroxide ion concentration? With this, I'm going to write a question on the board. All right. CONS period for consider. We're imagining that the equilibrium system which we had constructed has got 1.0 moles of undissolved calcium hydroxide. In turn, we're imagining to take this equilibrium system, which initially has got 1.0 moles of undissolved calcium hydroxide, and we're going to hammer it with 1.0 liters, a 1.0 molar HCl, all right? After we apply this, how must
resultant. That's what we asked about over here. System pH and S for solubility. Calcium hydroxide. Compare to pH and S calcium hydroxide. Initially. Initially beads when the calcium hydroxide was saturated in the deionized water. There's the question. Let's talk just for a few seconds and then we'll disband. Let's talk just for a few seconds about this treatment regarding the amount of calcium hydroxide we expect to dissolve. How much? I heard all, I heard half. Both can't be right. The, uh, the calcium hydroxide has two moles of hydroxide. Correct. Mole N, whereas there's only one mole of... Uh, We're adding a mole of hydronium ion, are we not? A mole of this got two moles of hydroxide on it. So how much of this do I expect to dissolve by this treatment? Half mole. You think that's going to have an appreciable impact on the resultant system calcium ion concentration? How will the resultant calcium ion concentration compare to the calcium ion concentration when we have this equilibrium? Saturated in deionized water. Hmm? Calcium ion concentration going to be the same? Did we not, by this treatment, put a half a mole of calcium ion in the solution? Because we dissolved half a mole of calcium hydroxide? So the resultant system has a calcium ion concentration which compares how to the calcium ion concentration here. It's a hell of a lot bigger, isn't it? You think that affects solubility? Does any change in the calcium ion concentration affect this equilibrium? We'll pick it up from that point next time.